What's up everybody? It's Will back again with another video. Now we've all heard that rumor, if you give your patient too much oxygen, they actually quit breathing, right? We've all heard that. Just me. So this is actually a thing guys, um, it's actually called the hypoxic drive theory. And what that says is that COPD patients rely on that lack of oxygen to breathe. Because in a normal person, we have chemoreceptors centrally located that sense carbon dioxide. And when the carbon dioxide is high, those chemoreceptors tell us to breathe and we get rid of the carbon dioxide. Now if you have COPD, you have chronically elevated carbon dioxide in your blood. So the theory is that those receptors become numb to that elevated carbon dioxide basically. So they rely on per peripheral chemoreceptors and they rely on a low oxygen, those peripheral chemoreceptors to take low oxygen in the blood. So when those levels are low, it tells the COPD patient, oh, I need to breathe. Okay, so basically what that theory is saying is if you give them oxygen, then those levels are never low and then hence the COPD patient just quits breathing. So why is that bad and why am I making a video on it? Well it's bad because a nurse might see this and think I shouldn't give oxygen to this struggling COPD who can't breathe at the moment, who is hypoxic. Um, you need to give them oxygen, okay? Um, now am I saying that there's no validity to the theory? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it does not, giving them oxygen will not cause them to stop breathing. So I know you're asking now, like, Will, if that decreased drive to breathe isn't what's raising their CO2 levels, what's raising their CO2 levels then? Um, the answer to that, and I want to go to ventilation and perfusion, okay? If you guys are familiar with this, it'll make sense and I'll try to explain it as simply as I can if you don't know what ventil ventilation and perfusion ratios are. Um, you basically have, let's try and spin around here so you can see, you basically have these little sacs in your lungs called alveoli. And this is where oxygen exchange and carbon dioxide exchange takes place. You have to have ventilation, which is air going. So when you take a deep breath, air goes into those sacs, fills them up, and that's oxygenated. Blood flow comes in, you've got this deoxygenated blood flow, comes in, and it passes off CO2, and then takes in the oxygen. That's your ventilation perfusion. Your perfusion is the blood that's going to the alveoli, the ventilation is the air coming into the alveoli. Now with a COPD patient, a lot of their alveoli is just jacked up, right? It's not working correctly. Some of it's not getting blood flow, some of it's not even getting air, okay? So, what happens is that blood flow, say that this alveoli sac doesn't work, okay? It's not getting any air. This blood flow that's going to it, it's just wasting its time. It's not getting any exchange, so it's trying to drop off CO2. It's not getting anything, so it goes back and it's still holding on to CO2. That would explain an increase in the rise in the bloodstream, right? That would explain the increase in CO2. Now, what eventually happens with COPD patients is their body compensates and it vasoconstricts around, it kind of shunts around that dead alveoli sac and it goes to a healthy alveoli sac that's getting ventilation. So it can drop off there, okay? And that's what eventually happens. Now, when you give a COPD or oxygen, this is where it comes in handy to know VQ ratios. When you give them oxygen, those vasoconstrictions that are shunting away from the dead alveoli space, they actually vasodilate. So the blood goes back to this dead space and wastes its time again, okay? You're given oxygen, instead of shunting around the dead alveoli, you're going back to the dead space. So once again, the blood's wasting its time, it's holding on to CO2, and that's when you give oxygen to a COPD patient. That's what really causes the biggest rise in their CO2 levels. Um, another explanation for the rise in CO2 uh, when you give oxygen to COPD patients is something called the Haldane effect. 
and this is uh, simplified. It's basically saying that the oxygenated hemoglobin, the hemoglobin that has no oxygen, it's able to carry more CO2 and get rid of more CO2. When you oxygenate it, there's less room for the CO2, thus more CO2 in the body. RT, any RTs out there? Do I have that right? I know this is your territory. I just kind of want to, I think it's important for nurses as well to understand this. So in conclusion, what am I saying? Basically, don't give your, don't be afraid to give your patients oxygen. If they have a low O2 sat, fix it, okay? Don't let them sit there in the 80% range. Um, you know, get that O2 sat up. Give them a little oxygen if they're struggling. Now, giving oxygen does increase the CO2 levels, kind of like uh, for the reasons that I went over, okay? It will increase those CO2 levels, um, but that's something that they're going to look at as far as ABG results, RT is going to go over it, and they're going to see, you know, what they need to be doing to get those values in a normal range, okay? But critical care situations especially, you're not going to let your patient be hypoxic because you're worried about... Um, you know, hypercarbia and sending them over the edge as far as carbon dioxide levels. You're not going to be worried about that. You're going to be worried about getting them oxygen on board and, you know, you'll intubate if you need to. But either way, I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, any suggestions, RT, let me know how I did. If I have any respiratory therapists out there, I know this is kind of your domain and I understand. I just feel like nurses. We really need to have a grip on this as well. So uh, just let me know what you think, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.